G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on the brand new patch for Age of Empires 4 to witness two Conqueror 3 players at the top level. Go at it. Let's get down to it because we've got an absolute banger of a game today. Ladies and gentlemen, in the north of the map, in the color pink, playing as the Japanese, it's Louis MT. And on the south side of the map, in the color blue, playing as the Mongols, it's Filisperto. <laughs> That's the best I could do. I, I don't actually know how it's pronounced, but I, I tried to put on my best like Spanish, Italian accent there for you. And look, if, if you thought that was an accurate accent, go ahead, hit that like button. If you thought it was uh, not an ac accurate accent, uh, hit the dislike button. Actually, no, please, please don't do that. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. So we got two really good players. These guys are incredible. So uh, Louis MT currently rank four on the ladder. Phyllis Birdo currently rank 35 on the ladder. So these guys are at the absolute top level. When when we think about like Conqueror 3 players, right? Uh, we are talking about, you know, 1600 rating, which is pretty good when you think about it. If you're at 1600 rating, you're probably, you know, top 200. These guys are at like 2.1K. That's how high they are. It's insane how high they are. They're like 500 points above the threshold, like the base threshold for, for Conqueror 3. So anyway, let's get into it. Enough about the players. Let's talk about the civilizations because we have got a great matchup here. We've got a Mongol player coming in from Phyllis Birdo. Now he's going to be opening with a barracks. One thing to note is that the Uvu's in the back of the base. It's going to mean a little bit more walk time. And have a look at this. Louis MT going to be going on the gold early on. Uh, which to me indicates that it's probably going to be a fast castle or at least an attempt at a fast castle. But you never know when you've got Mongol players in the game whether they're going to let you do what you want. So it's up to Phyllis Birdo to see if he can stop what his Japanese opponent looks to throw at him. Now, Louis's got a couple of options as to how he plays this out. Of course, we've seen 2TC be very popular uh, for the Japanese, but one of the more popular things that we have seen is that fast castle into the floating gate. Now, one of the things to note is that recently the floating gate has been changed, not as powerful as it used to be. Or I don't know, was it really... I, I guess it was... They nerfed it, but they nerfed it a while ago. In the most recent patch, it wasn't that they nerfed it. It's just that they've kind of changed it, really. Like, when, when you think about it, they've changed the Temple of Equality and the Floating Gate. Both of the Castle Age landmarks for the Japanese have, have received serious changes. So I wonder whether we're going to actually see much of a much of a, a switch up. But have a look at this. So far, so good for Phyllis Birdo. Insufficient wood. Don't you hate that? I'm just hey, I'm just trying to hand in my I'm just trying to hand in my gold here, bro. I don't, I'm not trying to repair up this forge. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what is about to happen here. So Phyllis Birdo has had a really good opening because Louis. I, I think Louis thought he was playing against the Chinese. He wasn't scouting any... I mean, he did scout. He, 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 he scouted the barracks. He scouted this. He knew this was coming. But he just kind of ignored it. And he's just... You know, he's with John Cena in the back of the limousine just eating the ice cream at the moment. He is being chilling. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he will lose his forge here. Um, and we'll lose the gold. But keep in mind, we are playing on Cliffside. One of the things about Cliffside is that there's no big gold. And you might not think that that's relevant, but let me explain. To compensate for no big golds, they put lots of little golds on the map, which means that if you're playing as the Mongols right now, there are a lot of golds you need to go check, and you can actually see Phyllis Birdo going to check the golds that are close by just because he's scared that Louis MT might be, you know, pulling pulling a fast one on him. Now, keep in mind that there are gold mines absolutely everywhere in each little corner of this map along the ridge line, so it's pretty centralized in that regard, but it's still quite a lot of work to actually find it all. Now, Will that change how Louis actually plays it? Because unlike his opponent who got double gold in the back of the base, Louis's golds are towards the front and the side. And unfortunately, they are being locked down by this outpost. So it's going to be tough for him playing out of this position, but it looks like the archery range will be coming up for him. He's putting this towards the front as well. Behind this, it looks like it's going to be the silver tree coming out for Phyllis Birdo. Now, I'm curious, we are we going to see a... Uh, a, a pivot for Louis uh, because I, I feel like we probably should because to me it was clear right he was on gold probably thinking about going for a fast castle just kind of asleep at the wheel like oh that's right I'm playing against the Mongols crap what do I do now that sort of thing uh, whereas now I'm I'm curious is he going to pivot because I would be thinking maybe a second town center might be the right call and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do so I think this is definitely the right call in this situation but is that what Phyllis Birdo wanted? Did Phyllis Birdo want to force his opponent to go into the second TC, make sure he keep him off, keeps him off gold? I think he probably did. 
when you consider just the, the uh, position of these outposts, the fact that they are both on the gold, he's, you know, th there was a really good outpost location that you can go for back here. To be honest, you probably don't want to do it just because you're going to spread yourself too thin. And that's one of the things that I often talk about on my Patreon, which if you'd like to check out, I'll leave a link in the description. There's plenty of free content over there. There is some paid stuff as well for the current season. So go check it out if you're interested in improving. But one of the things I talk about whenever I'm coaching Mongols is whenever you're playing aggressively with your outposts, you want to try leapfrogging your outposts, keeping them close together. Because what can happen is if you leave this outpost, there's a good chance, let's say you go and throw an outpost down on the back here, you're going to bring all your spears with you. Now, you might leave one in there. And the problem is you expose yourself to a potential bunker bust, which is when you just grab all the villagers and they right click on the outpost and they break the outpost and you don't even kill it, get a single villager. And then by the time you get this outpost up, you've got your spears in the back of the base. Essentially, you've just got your military in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's something that you want to avoid. You want to try and keep everything close together. And you can see that even though for Phyllis Bodo here, his outposts are relatively far away. There's nothing that really stops him from defending each respective outpost uh, with the with the, the forces that they've got. So I think this is absolutely fine. Whereas here, you know, if you went for something on the back here, you'd be a you'd be quite a bold player. We'll say that much. Anyway, the age up has now come through for Phyllis Bodo. We'll ride on board with him. As it looks like that Khan is going to be making its way towards the top side. You can see he's got the uh the market or the uh the neutral trading post already found out over here. And I'm curious to see whether he... Okay, he's going to be going to the bottom or the, the left-hand corner, the western corner, and he'll be trading over towards the east side. This is a really nice position that he's going to have here. Uh, this is very, very uh, limited on its exposure. And of course, consider the fact that Phyllis Bodo has already got these two outposts down, which guarantee that this section down towards the south side are pretty much closed for sale or closed for sale, closed for business. Uh, so realistically, all he's got to defend is this top side. Uh, and you can see that it's going to be pretty easy for him to do that because it's all quite a bit closer uh, than it is to his opponent's side. But we do now start to see that second TC coming up at the seven minute mark. Now, keep in mind your normal benchmark for a Japanese second TC is closer to the five minute mark. So this is quite a late second TC. But of course, there is a caveat and that being that uh, Louis MT today has gone for a couple of units because he has been put under pressure. Uh, so naturally, things are going to be a little bit slower when you do go for a strategy like this. Uh, but uh, we'll ride on board with Phyllis Berto and see how he's doing as it is going to be a transition into trade. A little bit of a, a, a passive transition into this feudal age, but of course he knows about the second town center from his opponent. What kind of response do we see from him? Does he look to just play it off the trade? because I'd be very interested to see how that stacks up against a 2TC play, because naturally you'd think 2TC should do better because there is a... It feels like you've got a better return on investment. But we'll have to wait and see. The other thing I would be very, very uh, aware of is that if Louis MT looks to go Castle Age here, he'll have access to the Mounted Samurai. And the Mounted Samurai does not care about your feelings. It will just run past these outposts very happily, and it will go straight for that trade. So I'll be curious to see whether Louis actually scouts that trade out. And you can see he's already on the map. He's one of the best players in the world. There is a reason why he is that good. And this is why he is already scouting out the opponent's position. He wants to know exactly what is up. Nice little bit of a raid attempt on the backside here. And we can see that... Now, at the moment, Louis is gathering up a little bit more stone. Might be thinking about picking up the Town Center upgrade, looking to go into the Daimyo Manor. But at the moment, really what I'm waiting for is Castle Age. I'm curious when we're going to see it, because I want to see the decision-making process for Louis about which landmark he goes into. Whether he goes into the Temple of Equality, which uh, we can actually review at the moment. So let's take a second just to take a look at these two new landmarks. Well, I, I say new, but they're not really new. They're, they've just been redone. Uh, the Floating Gate, of course, you'll be familiar with it. A very, very uh, stock standard landmark for the Japanese. You know, every game that you've played the Japanese or seen the Japanese play, play they've gone for the Yoroshiros. They've gone for the Floating Gate. Except that one game that we casted on uh, Hidden Valley against the Order of the Dragon, where it could have actually been relevant but it just wasn't because it never came online uh whereas now uh of course there's been a, a couple of changes to the temple of equality uh they get a a couple of uh of unique bonuses uh but most importantly they get to reduce that damage from your opponent now one of the things to note is with the bonus that they get at the temple of equality uh, the way that it works is quite simple. You you get these priests that are cheaper, and they also generate gold for you now. It's not a lot of gold, but it's still decent. 
it's it's enough that you would go okay well maybe i can justify having 10 or 20 of these priests out to actually do what they're supposed to do the problem is it's single target their ability and it reduces the damage of the enemy units by half which is a lot but the problem that I've got is that the Mongols have a very specific unit composition that they love to go. You know what I'm going to say. It's my favorite composition that there is. Spearman Crossbow. Spearman Crossbow, which means that you're going to be playing up against very cheap units that are quite happy to have their damage reduced because there's so damn many of them. So I'm curious to see exactly how that's going to stack up in this situation. Whether Louis looks to go for it, but at the moment, he's just going to be sticking it out with the Yumi Ashigaru. And have a look at this. He's out on the field with no upgrades whatsoever. Nobody here to help buff up this attack. And look at this. He's up against double upgrades on the side of Phyllis Birdo. Phyllis Birdo knows what is going on. That is for sure. Now we see a Keshik also added in here with the ranged armor. The Keshik is going to be having a field day. So we need to see plus one ranged attack from Louis right now. And we also need to see that Ben man on the field for him that's going to really help buff his army up but he's done what he needed to he's taken out the outpost he's bought himself a little bit of space but the problem that you're going to have is that phyllis birdo well he is totally addicted to feudal you can see he is he is raring to go right now he's picked up all of his upgrades and i'm loving this from phyllis birdo the fact that he's not adding in the second tc we're just seeing the one tc slowly adding in more traders but Focusing on the economy, double broadaxe, wheelbarrow, and then at the same time working in these additional upgrades. Really liking this angle from Phyllis Birdo. It's feeling very strong, uh, really, really nice in this early stage of the game. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing on that trade. And he's up to 11 traders. He's at parity with his opponent on 2TC. Keep in mind, it does take only 21 seconds to make the trader compared to the 20 seconds of the villager. So that's actually not too bad. How's he doing? 90 gold. I tell you what. That's not, that's, that's not a bad trade deal. And I don't think Donald Trump would be complaining about a trade deal like that. That is, uh, that's, that's actually pretty crazy when you think about it. 90 gold coming through. I mean, we could time this, but I, I think it's probably close to about 90 seconds there and back. Maybe a little bit more. I remember if, if you were going to do corner to corner, it was uh, three minutes and seven seconds, which would be 90 seconds. And that would just be across there. So coming up, I reckon you're probably close to maybe 110 seconds, somewhere around that. But uh, look, we, we, we could try and time it. Let, let, let's try and time it. Okay, we, we're going to follow this guy. Wait, this is two guys? This looks like one guy. This is the classic case of... Oh, look at that. All right. 1231 is the drop off. Let's see if we can remember to pick this guy up. Can I get this guy a control group? I can. Can I come back to him? I can come back to him. Whoa, we can check back in with him in a little bit. Okay, 12 minutes 30. Remember that? Write that one down. Uh, who am I talking to? I'm talking to Steve. Steve. Uh, was it Steve? Steve, did I play against you? I think I played against you, Steve. Steve, this is. Write it down, Steve. Write it down, Steve, because we got ourselves a battle. I got to focus on real stuff, Steve. Bannerman goes down. Plus one ranged attack is through, though. You can see the Bannerman was actually a Katana Bannerman by the looks of it. No, it was a Yumi Bannerman. Wait, is the Yumi Bannerman bugged? I don't know if you guys saw that, but the... the... Oh, hold on, no. They weren't... It wasn't bugged. It's just he doesn't have plus one ranged attack. There's the plus one ranged attack. It's not bugged. He just didn't have his ranged attack in yet. But I tell you what, man. How... Oh, 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 hold on, check in, check in, check in with... Uh... You know what? This trader, he is named Steve. This is called Steve the Trader right here. Uh, and coincidentally, the, Steve is also the guy who's written it down for us. Steve, can we just double check? What was that time that you wrote down? 12.30? Okay, cool. We're 60 seconds through at the moment. Not too long before Steve gets to his location. In fact, he's about, what? I'd say three-fifths of the way. Three-fifths of the way through. Try saying that fast. Try saying that five times. Three-fifths of the way through. Three-fifths of the way... Yep, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna try it. Keshix towards that top side, mobilizing on the wood line. Khan might get picked off here. He needs to pop that arrow. Not gonna have the time, and you can see a quick farmhouse thrown down. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be the walls that he needs. A couple of villagers will go down. We see one, two on the wood line, unfortunately, and the Keshix make their way. Let's check in on Steve. He's pretty close. How you doing back there, Steve? Not long to go. It's looking like he's just crossed that... Uh, what, what were we at? 90 seconds? So, hold on. We're getting close there. There he comes in at 117, 118, we'll call it. So, just short of two minutes. So, 108 seconds for Steve to drop off his gold. So, not too bad when you think about it from that perspective. That's like, what, a gold a second? So, that, that's a lot faster. Well, almost a gold a second right there. I mean, it's a resource a second, that's for sure. Look at, look at what he's pulling in. Look at what he's pulling in right there. He's pulling in more than one resource a second. Actually... Parry the one. Yep, it's like one resource a second on, on the dot, actually. Towards that front, look at this. Archers underneath the town center. Look at the archer mass as well. 36 archers out here. 
Daimyo Manor is online, so an extra arrow slit's going to help out in the defense here. But the Kashyyyk do get cleaned up towards the top. Spears have done a decent job. Let's talk a little bit, a bit about this, because you guys might be looking at these traders and thinking, oh, that's not too bad. No, that's actually crazy good. One resource per second is Imperial Age with all of your technologies and wheelbarrow. So your base villager is going to collect gold at 40 gold per minute, okay? So if we take a look at, you know, any, any one of these villagers out here that's gathering gold, not that there's any, 40 gold a minute. Wheelbarrow comes in, you're up to 45 gold. Then uh, you, your uh, first upgrade that comes through, now you're up to like 40, no, 48, 49 gold, somewhere around that region. And then it, it keeps going away, but 60 gold every minute is absolutely ludicrous that that is crazy good phyllis bodo now with a double tower defense coming through you can see the numbers of yumi looking pretty decent but phyllis bodo still has the number advantage at the moment 35 against now the yumi have finally got that advantage you can see the spears helping out tank up a little bit of that damage at the moment the japanese louis mt does have the military advantage but keep in mind those units are nowhere near as strong as their opponents on the other side spear numbers starting to get dwindled down i say that as he's got 18 spears on the field and although oh, the, oh there were keshiks inside you know this reminds me of how many elephants can you fit on a boat and you can get 16 elephants on a boat or something ridiculous uh, but you can only you know uh, what, what was the meme i, I remember seeing you know, there was some sort of meme about putting elephants in an outpost you know, the, the, you could fit five elephants in an outpost, but you couldn't fit six men-at-arms or something. Unfortunate for Phyllis Birdo, the difference right there between a 2300 player and a 2100 player is that he didn't forget about the Keshiks, whereas, uh, yeah, Phyllis Birdo did. All right, age up coming through. It's going to be the Kuril time, no real surprise. But have a look at this, have a look at this. Phyllis Birdo jumping into the outpost. He's looking to try and keep his traders alive. We'll lose one of them. Spears also going to be coming forward. The trade will be shut down for the moment. Veterancy on the archers coming through. We'll need to be looking for a couple more upgrades. I'd like to see plus two on the way as well. He's got plenty of gold in the bank for these upgrades. Where is it? Why? Oh, it's we're, we're on the wrong perspective. There you go now. He's picking up three upgrades at the same time. That calls for a second blacksmith. Blacksmith, rather. If anything, calls for... You, you, you cheeky mongol trader oh no you are so cheeky phyllis birdo but have a look at this we've got a farm oh it's a farmhouse it's a farmhouse he's going for the boar by the looks of it spring on emplacement will be coming through i don't think louis realizes about this position but very soon he could be made aware and i tell you what there's nothing worse than being attacked with sprinkled emplacements coral tie looking to try and break through here there's plenty of units on the other side louis doesn't have time at least apparently it doesn't appear to have time to age up this attack is imminent from phyllis birdo nice little bit of a trade on this backside. it will hold for the moment and now pushing through we enter into the cinematic mode as it looks like phyllis birdo has decided he wants to take the fight the coral tie has just moved forward and said take me take me for all i am japanese player i want to be japanese kawaii and unfortunately the Japanese <laughs> louis mt's just ignored him he's like i don't want your damn landmark you take your landmark and you you you, you go back over the other side of the ridge where you belong enemy player but it looks like he will come up the kuro tie will find some space in the base unfortunately that all the units have left the attack and now we do see that those upgrades are taking a little bit of time to come through we know that he clicked plus twos when he came in but he did them all on the same uh barracks or on the same blacksmith rather and you can see that plus two is still on the way in for that ranged armor so not taking a fight as well as he could have been right there ideally you want to wait for veterancy and you want to wait for those upgrades a little bit of a kashik push through on this side look at what this kashik could be doing right now but instead it's just working down yeah you you work down that lumber camp kashik you keep doing you buddy yeah you, you, you fight the good fight buddy kurotai gets out of there pretending nobody saw it kurotai we saw you. Don't pretend we didn't. Age up comes through on the other side of the map. Get out of town. Oh, it's the Temple of Equality. We didn't realize it was going to be that way today. Louis MT with the big plays. Temple of Equality is online, ladies and gentlemen. Come and get it. All right, I'm taking bets three to one. Temple of Equality is going to be your MVP for today. Uh, I'm, I'm not really taking bets. To, to be honest, Australia's got a betting problem. I don't know if you know this, but uh, we, we've got a really big betting problem. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm really fortunate. I have, an, I have an addictive personality. One of the things that, that just happens with me is I find something and I just get so addicted to it, right? Like if you look through my YouTube history for like a period of like four months, there's just golf videos. And then the very, then like maybe the day after it's like, it's something different like cars and then boom, golf videos completely gone. You'll never see another one. And it's just, it, it's just car videos. And I'm just lucky 
that at this stage of my life, the gambling phase hasn't hit yet because I just know when it does, it's just going to ruin my life. So for, for your sake and mine, I'm not going to take any bets on this, all right? We're just going to watch and we're going to enjoy it without taking bets, all right? Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry to get personal. And, gee, sometimes Drongo really breaks out like the serious stuff. Like, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> geez, what's wrong with you, Drongo? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it, I, it happens sometimes. All right, Kurultai gets forced back. It's taking a lot of damage. Remember, the Kurultai's got no ranged armor, so it will go down pretty quickly here. It's lost 20% of its health already, and it's decided of all the places it wants to go, it wants to make that stealth forest its new home. At least I think that's what it wants to do. You can kind of see the blueprint right there for it. Nice little spot, actually, because you can throw outposts up on the back and they can defend it, but you can't really be attacked with it. Uh, but Siege Workshop is out. Keep in mind that... Louis won't have access to any Yorushiros this game. So that means no passive gold coming through from the forges. It means no siege workshops with crazy production times. But it does mean the Temple of Equality with its Buddhist monks. The Buddhist monk generates 25 gold every 60 seconds if you have the Zen upgrade. And you know that's exactly what he's going to be working towards here. So let's see how many monks we get out on the field. Keep in mind, he will be able to train more as long as he's got more of the Buddhist temples down. Together, the Buddhist temples can actually do some very crazy stuff in the Imperial Age. But unfortunately, at this stage, they can't really do it. Louis, he's in a tough spot right now. The mangonels are starting to build up to two mangonels. Three sprinkles already, and a whole bunch of veteran archers are out. But look at the switch. It's starting to happen now for his opponent. We do see the first of the crossbows are on the field. No spears just yet, but expect to see it. Expect to see that transition shortly. To be fair, you probably won't see it shortly. Look, at, it's pretty much just archers, you know. We're countering what we see, not what we think we see. Uh, so that's always really important. One of the big things I talk about, you know, whenever I'm coaching, I, I say we, we we counter what we see. But there we go. Big fight about to unfold. Double Baganel shot. Oh, it's absolutely massive. So many units have gone down in the blink of an eye. Louis MT losing it almost all just within a second. You can see the power of the mangonels and the triple sprinkles out against the double sprinkles on the back for the Japanese. And keep in mind, he's got a third one in queue right now. He's going to need to push right as that sprinkled comes out. Keep in mind, it's going to be three sprinkled shots to take out these mangoes. So Louis needs to focus down his enemy sprinkles first. Let's see how he goes about it. They move up. He's taken out the first of the sprinkles. Now going to have another one and he's managed to actually keep his own alive somehow, some way. The three sprinkles have survived. But now his opponent, Phyllis Bodo, evens it all up. We get, let's get back into that. Let's get back into that cinematic mode. Well, I don't even know why that came out. Off. But now, the archers up against the Yumi. The Manganel one gets taken out, but there's three more where that came from. Springles on the back. A single one remains. He's going to have a tough time bringing out the games, but unfortunately, the archers maintain control. And I tell you what, Phyllis Birdo, he's looking good in this game. It is looking incredible for Phyllis Bodo right now. As long as he gets those sprinkled numbers back up, that's the key right here. He needs to get those sprinkled back online. And the tough part, I think, for Louis is in Louis's situation, he just wants to spam Siege. The reality is he can't do that because he didn't go for the floating gate. It would be very simple. You get your floating gate, you get your Siege Workshop, you put your Yorushiro in your Siege Workshop, and now you've got infinite Siege coming out super duper quickly and you're living your best life. The reality is, though, for right, right now for Louis MT, he's gone for the Temple of Equality, I feel like it might be the Temple of Defeat very, very soon if he can't get himself in shape. A very slight economic lead at the moment for his opponent. The trade has come back online for Phyllis Bodo. He has got all the gold coming into these coffers. Let's switch it over to income per minute. Get a bit of an idea of where he currently stands. Sitting at 1k, 2k, 4.4k. That is an incredible economy. Compare that over to Louis who currently sits at 700, 1,800, 2,400-ish, if you're lucky. He's got double the economy. Now, keep in mind, that's only because he's just handed in all of this gold right here. This is going to drop down very quickly. It takes, what, what did we say? 108 seconds to get across this map. And there's only 60 seconds in a second. Sorry, no, there's not. There's 60 seconds in a minute. There you go. Uh, there's only 60 seconds in a minute. Mango shots come through. You can see he's trying his best to prevent his opponent from gathering up the gold but Louis's working out all different angles Louis wants to stop that trade but at the same time he also wants to secure gold for himself he had a really unfortunate spawn today with the double gold towards the front the first gold and the second gold compared to his opponent who's got back gold back gold you know can you imagine Louis in this spawn how how much of a different game this would be if Louis had two safe gold 
Oh my lord, it would be a completely different game. But Phyllis Bodo continues to push up. We're right on board with him right now as he begins to push towards the Japanese base. Meanwhile, he is under attack over towards the west side. Expect to see... Pff, Expect to see a lot of traders just chilling out, and that's exactly what we see. There's 18 of, of them online at the moment. I, I got 40 just on my... How many traders are you on right now, Phyllis Berto? Can we just quickly check? 48 traders. That's a lot of traders. That is that is quite some traders. Uh, that, is, that is a metric uh, fuck ton of traders, I believe. <laughs> He's thrown down a new market. He's just like, this will do. We, we will now trade to this market. 37 gold. Uh, but look, you, you win some, you lose some, Phyllis Berto. And now pushing in. Looks like Louis realizes that, hold on a minute, this is an illegal market. We cannot be supporting this sort of practice. Keep in mind the Coral Tie still towards the middle, and his army also continues to push through. At the moment, Phyllis Bodo does lead by an absolute country mile when it comes to the military population. Also has the eco advantage as well. Keep that in mind as well. Up, up by, what was that? Khan going down, that's what that was. So at the moment, Phyllis Berto is max. 200 out of 200. 140 population for Louis MT on the Japanese. But now, all the horsemen have run past and they've just obliterated the enemy. Keep in mind, there's no spears here. What did I say earlier? I said you need crossbow spear. But he's just said, I don't need crossbow spear. I need archers. And now the, the chickens have come home to roost, I think goes the saying. Uh, yeah, you've made your bed. You sleep in it. All, all those good... Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. How did he... <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Louis just was like, yeah, this this will do it. And Phyllis Berto's like, no, 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 it, no, it will not. Don't even try. I've still got all of my siege. The chickens did not come home to roost. Uh, if anything, the you counted the, the eggs before they hatched. And now, now you've just got a whole bunch of eggs because they didn't hatch. Uh, so... It, it, yeah, you count chickens before they hatch, right? <laughs> uh, uh, it's nothing else, right? We're not counting dinosaurs before they hatch. Single villager being brought up by Phyllis Berto. I would say this is a mistake. Phyllis Berto, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cite... Th this is a citation here. At 27 minutes in... Okay, if we're three minutes into the game and you want to bring one villager to build the outpost with your army, sure. Phyllis Berto, we're now 27 minutes into this game. You've got a very large army... Please bring four to five villagers next time you're going to bring bring an, or build an outpost here. Because we need these outposts up stat. It is very key to this defense that these outposts remain online and they get up as quickly as they can. Horsemen over towards the west side. Mongols starting to struggle now. Attacks coming from all over the map. We're starting to see that rat Dota come into play. Mango's getting some good shots off on the Kura storehouse. Springled will be coming out to meet the Manganels. He's saying, hey guys, um, how you doing? Unfortunately, uh... <laughs> unfortunately... Um, they're, they're doing quite well, it seems. And they, uh, they take him out before he gets a, a chance to respond. Um, because, uh, well, now one landmark's gone down. Louis MT on the defensive doesn't look like it's going to be Louis MT's game today. We, we talked about the Temple of Equality. Unfortunately for Louis, he's got a couple of relics and nothing else going for him. Hasn't gone into the Buddhist monks. Hasn't really had the space to go into it, let alone the base to go into it, let alone the face to go into it. Look at this. He's had people in his face this entire bloody game, trying his best to get on it. Needs to delete the walls. Will he go for it? No, the Mangonels walk into point blank range. Going for a little bit of a springled kiss. The Mangonels unfortunately go down in the blink of an eye. The horsemen cleaning up. Spears also joining in for a party. They say, hey, I, I heard that there was a, a party with lots of lots of spears and, and we're, we're spearmen. Do you guys mind if we join? And the, the horsemen say, hey, the more the merrier. Uma Betterman in here as well, helping out with a little bit extra damage. Springwoods run over towards the east side. Trebuchet has gone down. Meanwhile, the distraction is coming good over on this west side. Plenty of Kashyyyks that needed to be over on this east side. Nowhere to be seen. And now those horsemen, together with the spears, finally going to be enough for Louis MT to clean this one out completely. And you can see the consequence of not having those outposts up in time. Had you had those outposts up, maybe the defense would have been a little bit stronger. Maybe your enemies wouldn't have stuck around for as long as they did. But unfortunately for Phyllis Berto, while he has the eco lead, he has lost the military lead. Now in favor of his Japanese opponent, Louis MT begins to build. Coral Tai will be going down very soon. I don't think there's any way you can escape, unfortunately, Mr. Coral Tai, unless those Kashyyyks run in at Mark III. Those that it looks like the Kuril Tai will be going down. And if it goes down in this position, it is very hard to recover. You need to bring a lot of villagers to repair this bad boy. You need to wait a lot of time for it to come up. 
Uh, you got to be very careful with your Kuraltai. And unfortunately today, it looks like that Kuraltai will go down. So it's going to be one landmark apiece for both of these players. Landmark victory is was approaching, but no longer approaching for Phyllis Birdo. As Louis MT has really found a way to come back into this game. The Spearman and Horseman combo is looking incredible at this stage. Crossbows no, definitely not needed. The only thing that Phyllis Birdo is going to need are spears out right now. And you can see he's struggling. Not a single spear on the field for him. He's going to get eaten alive by these units. On the east side, it looks like we've got things that are beginning to happen. <laughs> things that are beginning to happen. White Stupa on the front. This is very bold of you, Phyllis Birdo. Uh, Phyllis Birdo, you are telegraphing to your opponent. Hey, just so you know, I'm going to be putting all of my resources into this age up. Please, under no circumstances, make units and send them to my base right now because I am aging up. Phyllis Birdo, you don't want to be fighting right now. You just want to be surviving right now. You want to be thriving right now and you just can't do that. Poor Phyllis Birdo, he's really start, starting to struggle. And you can see that the real power right now that is coming out from Louis MT is this undiscovered combination. Spearman together with Horseman. But the key here is the Bannerman. The Bannerman enhances these units by so much. There's just heaps of units. And I think this is what's so smart about, about Louis MT and the Japanese. You know, one of the big things about the Japanese that I really wanted to harp on for that first patch is we still need to let them cook. They still are, um, they haven't cooked for long enough yet. And this is what I'm talking about. We are witnessing right now a brand new strategy coming out from the Japanese. I've never seen this before. He is throwing pure trash at his opponent, and it's a very simple game plan. The more units that are out on the field because they're cheaper, the more units that get enhanced by this Uma Banner Man. It makes perfect sense. Able to overwhelm his opponent, we start to see the power of the Japanese. But Phyllis Birdo still yet to make a single Spearman. Instead, going to be... <laughs> Phyllis Birdo, can we make some Spearman? I know you may, you've got men-at-arms in queue, but just so you're aware, Phyllis Birdo, you might not be. Your enemy's making horsemen. <laughs> look at oh my god look at the tables have turned oh how the tables have turned all of the traders idle towards this western corner louis just taking control of the map and phyllis birdo trying to scrounge together a defense look at the number of units flooding into his base he's gone imperial age but at what cost 60 military against 11 right now louis mt is completely outweighing his opponent in the blink of an eye this happened and it all happened over here on this east side we saw the temple of equality but it never even mattered it never even came online no one even cared for the temple of equality it's done barely anything this game i wish i could put it on the thumbnail but we have got a secret japanese combo that has been discovered in this brand new patch and louis mt it will be your pioneer for it it looks incredible and it takes me back to the days of watching that game that give you anxiety played on confluence you might not remember it go back and check it it's one of the most viewed videos on this channel it lasted for 90 minutes and was one of the reasons that horsemen got nerfed in imperial age it was because give you anxiety was making only horse castle of the crow he's making the castle of the crow in the middle of the map oh my god get out what are we witnessing right now the japanese completely renewed right here this is incredible so to explain the balance testers are a little bit behind where we are. They're playing on a couple of patches before what we are. And they're testing internally. They're like, is this good? Is this bad? And what they found was that horsemen in the Imperial Age were absolutely bonkers. You could make only horsemen and you would just win your games because they're fast and they're quite effective against, you know, every unit except for the spear, but you could just outrun the spear. And once you got enough horsemen that you could kill the spear, so they nerfed the horsemen and everyone was scratching their head trying to work out why. And it wasn't until I spoke with one of the developers privately and he said, actually, horsemen were really busted, but no one ever worked it out except for GUA. GUA worked it out, but never mind. It's not even going to matter because in the end, Louis MT will be victorious as the horsemen overwhelm his opponent with trade being shut down completely in this game. Louis MT doing an incredible job right here. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch him. I think he's over on Billy Billy, so I'll chuck that link in and I'll catch you guys in the next one.